Let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Trans Sponster tote bag from Sincerely Jen Patterns. This was such a fun make. Definitely a bit of a challenge, but also simple? Is that possible? Like, it's a fun spin on something simple. Um, so it has top stitched side seams. It has a top zipper pocket. Um, and then it has one slip pocket, but I have doubled it so that there's one on both sides. And then the inside just has a zipper pocket, which I have made an overlay zipper pocket instead of just a regular zipper pocket. Um, the materials I used, I mentioned in a cutting video, but I will go over it again. Um, I used a mid-weight vinyl, a uh, luxe weight vinyl off my website. Um, and then I used webbing from Georgia Girl Stitches, um, and then all of the hardware is from my website. I only interfaced with Decaville Heavy on the bottom panel and the top interfacing strip, um, and I had zero issues with bulk uh, while sewing the side seams or any other part. Um, this is me sewing this off of the tester of the pattern, so there might be some changes. Um, I recommended making the handles just like one inch longer so that there's a little extra room otherwise. Like, I really enjoyed making this bag. Um, there are, I believe, four sizes included. There is the small, the schmedium, the medium, and the large. And I have created the schmedium, of course. Um, I really, really like the strap connector for the um, crossbody strap. I think that's super fun. Um, it gives you another option other than just the overlay that um, are in the Lynn's Handmade patterns, things like that. Um, I am going to recommend to her to add um, either top side panel stabilizer or interfacing in the side panels just because where this strap connector is, it's kind of heavy and, you know, it's dipping a little bit. I kind of like the way it looks, but you may want to add a little strip of something there for structure. But otherwise, I had so much fun making this bag. I hope to make the other sizes, and I hope you will enjoy this journey with me. I have my two zippers here. I've got my one for the recessed zipper closure, and then I have one for the zippered pocket. I am just going to quickly put my zipper pulls on making sure that the tape stays lined up nicely. And then I know that for this um, zipper panel, I'm going to need my zipper tape um, 90 degree angled. So I'm just gonna pop up, pop open the top zipper fold it on itself and then I take just a hair clip, clip it together. Some people hand sew this together or you could use your machine really quick. But another little trick is to then cut off your excess zipper tape and take your lighter. Just really quick let the ends kind of melt a little bit and then press it together. And then I'm just repeating that on the other side, making sure that they are lined up. So I'm, I've got my nail behind here and I'm pressing up and then I'm folding the open side down behind that so that it's a nice fold. And then clipping and you can see there how it's kind of uneven. And then I'm just going to use my lighter, let it cool. And then I'll just leave this like that until we're ready to work on the zipper panel. Um, I'm also gonna add some clips 
to the floor and the bottom of my zipper so that it doesn't come undone while I'm sewing. It has been quite some time since I have filmed from this direction. Um, I got some feedback that some people miss the old orientation, so we're going to go ahead and try it for this video. Um, please let me know if you prefer one way or the other, or um, maybe someday I will be skilled enough to do both. I have got my phone right here next to me with the pattern instructions, so I'm just going to read off of it um, as I sew it for the first time. Very first thing is we are going to baste these pieces together. I just use a piece of double sided tape while I was at my cutting table and then add the accent strip of fabric and the way I did that was I measured the center of that strip. I added a piece of double sided tape and then when I lined up this fabric I made sure to put it right under that line but so I could still see the line and then when you fold it over you have enough on the underside to top stitch to where you won't see um, you won't have you won't miss catching both layers I swear I know how to talk I am going to add a little uh, woven label underneath this pocket here underneath the um, accent. I think it'd be super cute. And this is such an easy way to add branding or a little bit of fun to your project. Just line that up, make sure it's caught within the tape. Um, hopefully the handles don't cover that up too, too much. I think it'll be like just enough. Um, and then if you watch the cutting video, the measurement in the pattern was wrong for the slip pocket accent. It should be the exact same length. Um, but again, I am making it based off of testing the pattern, which there's bound to be those little issues, but we should be okay. I made it close enough. Maybe I trusted Jenny a little too much. I was like, oh, she probably knows what she's doing. So you can see we've caught both sides of that accent. If you want, you could do a second line of stitching. Like here, I'm a little far, but I'm not worried about it. I think they still look really good. Um, and then within the pattern directions, there is only one slip pocket, but I was like, why not add two? Who's it gonna, who's gonna know? All right, and then we know what the top edge is because we've got that Decaville Heavy Stabilizer fused. We're just gonna find the center of this panel and the center of our slip pocket, which will vary depending on what size you're doing. And I'm gonna lay that in place. And I'm just gonna check my measurements really quick. Man, I even walked up to go get it and I got distracted. So it's one, two, three and a half from each side for the medium size. And so what I'm going to do is just baste that into place right now. Again, make sure your stabilizer is at the very top. So fun. And then I am going to kind of production sew these together. Is it saving any time? Who knows? Um, but I don't feel like I need to sew the bottom of the pocket. If you're just doing one, it can't hurt. And then just make sure that that pocket doesn't slip around on your fabric as you're sewing it down. You want it to be nice and lined up. 
And this is pretty much just a basting or a stay stitch. So I am not going to worry about needing to tie off my threads or anything like that. And repeat on the other side. Alrighty. And now we're gonna move on to the webbing handles. So we're gonna need our webbing handles. Just the, not the crossbody, but the um, we'll call them the grab handles for the moment. Um, and then our handle overlay pieces. And I chose to cut mine out of my printed vinyl instead of the contrasting solid vinyl, but either way would have been fine. Okay, and then it says to find the center. Um, the pattern is not giving exact measurements for this part because your measurements are going to vary based on what size you're doing. Okay, so I've got my center marked and then from the center we want to measure two and a half inches. on either side, which would make five inches the length. And then the center is 0.75. So I've got that marked out. And this is kind of like the guardian grab handle if you've made the guardian. And what we're gonna do is we're going to fold those edges in should be doing both at the same time, but whatever. And then just in case you can measure out the five inches again. if you need to. And we're going to make sure that we stitch that down. If you don't want to add the accent vinyl, let's say you know your machine isn't fully capable of sewing vinyl over the webbing, you could just sew your webbing into place and just make sure that you do a really nice looking um, box stitch and pull your threads to the back. The overlay piece is raw edged, so if you were going to, let's say, use fabric for that, you could cut it um, an inch wider, fold your raw edges in, and then wrap it around your handle. Okay, so we're gonna line up one side centered. No. Yeah? What am I doing? Okay. I'm lining it up to like the center of the strap. And then I'm going to wrap it around and then it'll overlap how I would like it. 
And then you've got your overlay. Looking all fun. And then you can use another piece of double-sided tape. I'm just gonna fold it. And then we are going to repeat that on the other handle. I now have both handles with their overlays attached. And now I've added double-sided tape to the bottom of my straps. So each main panel is going to have these attached um, depending on which size you're making anywhere from two and a half to four inches from each side of the bag. And then you're gonna sew six and three quarters up looks like. It looks like we are overlapping the pocket piece by about half an inch, so that's good. Hopefully I did not add my double-sided tape too high. And so just want to make sure that I am measuring two and a half from each side edge consistently. And now the handle might look like it's too short, but you're going to be sewing like an inch and a half or two inches of the top of the bag under. So don't worry. Like this Decaville piece becomes the very top of the bag. So you can see it's a nice size grab handle there. All right. So then we're going to measure six and three quarters up, which is um, for this one just huh. my pocket is a little bit taller. So I'm just going to sew up to the height of the pocket. You don't want to sew under the pocket or um, you're gonna see that accent stitch. And that could be for the small one, not this medium sized one. And I'm just not seeing that information correctly. Under that handle would be another really fun place to add um, a little woven label or something. And I am actually sewing just a teeny tiny one stitch over the top of the pocket for stability. And then nothing says that you cannot sew more than one row of stitching on these. So if you wanted to, you could add like two rivets here, um, or you could add four lines of stitching total, totally up to you. Um, but you don't want to over sew any sections or you could risk your um, webbing tearing. 
I am using seatbelt webbing, which shouldn't, but if you're using like a nylon polypropylene, it could eventually tear. Even a cotton could eventually tear. You don't want that. So now we're just going to repeat that on the other side. And well, how about that? I have a two and a half inch ruler right next to my sewing machine. With adding a slip pocket to both sides, I'm not sure where the best place for a nameplate would be, so I may add it through the slip pocket really quick um, because I did not sew the bottom shut, so I think I'll do that. I also mentioned in my cutting video, and I mentioned it to Jenny too, that it would be fun on the larger sizes to even add um, a, a zippered pocket to this front slip pocket. Um, I think some of the bag stock sewing patterns have that, and it's such a quick but effective little pocket to add. Um, and that is one thing I really love about Sincerely Gen patterns is they are basic for beginners, but if you have bag knowledge, you could always, I hate not to say improve upon, but you could always add on in complexity to the pattern you're making. Nameplate really quick. So I'm finding the center, lining up my nameplate to the center and then I'm going to use my seam ripper to rip through. Make sure you don't go through your lining. And of course the double sided tape I used is extra sticky. It's okay. Just very gently And then it's up to you how you want to fold your prongs in, either in or out. But there is the nameplate attached. And then we can move on to creating our connectors on the side panels. Side panels. And now I'm like, did I cut the connectors? I did, yay! And then grab my D-rings. I was like, did I even get D-rings out? Who knows at this point? Holding long raw edges in towards the center. You could always add a little bit of stabilizer to the center to help reinforce. And 
I'm going to fold this and clip. It does not say to baste it in place or anything like that or do a little top stitching, but you could do that and then line up the center. I, instead of lining it up directly, I've got it up like an eighth of an inch within my seam allowance at the center. Okay. And then we will baste that into place. And you don't want to over stitch for the basting or you could risk perforating your vinyl. Now I chose not to add any Decaville light to the lining or main bodies of these pieces. Um, we will find out if I live to regret that and maybe I'll film another video before this pattern releases, but anyway. Alrighty. So now we can create the darts on our lining and exterior side panels as soon as I find them. Got it. Okay. Now, what we do here is we're not cutting those darts. We are folding it and stitching from the outside edge to the inside edge on that line. Now you can see that dart. So we're folding at that point and lining up the edge markings and then sewing from line to line. Now, it doesn't explicitly say to clip it, so I'm not going to. I think it's going to add, or to, you know, to cut it off. I think it might add a little bit of structure in that. So I'm going to fold it up and out of the way, but you can see the little 3D effect it adds. Oh, I'm excited. And you'll notice that your exterior is taller than your interior, and that's good. You want that. And then to make it go just a little bit faster, instead of clipping from dart to dart, I'm just going to pull my thread out a little bit to give some slack, and then continue on the next one. So lifting my needle up, pulling the thread out, and continuing on to the next one.
Okay. There's those side panels. And now we're going to add the bottom panel of the bag. Um, you could add purse feet to this potentially, but since it's such a rounded bottom bag, I'm not sure if it's going to be like the most beneficial. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to line up the bottom edge. You can start on either side. You're going to have to top stitch it open on either side anyway. And then follow your stabilizer. Don't sew through it, just sew right next to it. And that is going to close off your zippered pocket, or your slip pocket. And then you're going to fold it down and your seam allowance is going to be pointing towards the bottom, which creates this really nice lip. on that bottom seam through all of those layers. I could see this being a really fun bag to make with like waxed canvas as the accent since it's like a paper bag look. I don't know. It'd be cool. So you can see I'm sewing next to it but not through it. That might be even a little too far off, but I can always adjust that by pressing that seam down a little further so that I can feel the stabilizer. as I top stitch this. And oh my goodness, am I happy with my choices and like the red color and webbing and all that. It's looking so pretty. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It is now time to add the side panels. Then get either lay down or go away. So I'm gonna fold this in half. Mark my centers. I think I'm just gonna make a little snip. Dude, you can sit here. You just gotta lay down. One side. And if you need to tack the center into place, couldn't hurt. And then once, okay, bye. You have a few pieces of your center clipped. You can start clipping the top edge and line that up, and then the rest will kind of just work its way together. And right now I'm using um, a mid-weight vinyl that I carry on my website along with a Lux regular weight vinyl. So it's like a 0 0.7 and a one point millimeter thickness um, and I I don't see the need for interfacing this um, and I don't think that a domestic machine would have any issues because we're not sewing through any stabilizer and the Decaville light is um, flexible enough at this point to be able to sew those curves but that is what that's looking like oh I can't wait why am I so excited I, I don't know. I don't know. One thing that helps me sew curves lately, um, if you don't want to use a stapler, is you could 
use double-sided tape. I know some people will use glue and let it sit, which to me seems like the most foolproof way of sewing it. I'm covered up. I'm kind of here. And then this is me hitting my leg. Is a half inch seam allowance. And we're gonna trim it down in the end. I am using a stitch length of about 4.5 and that half inch seam allowance. And so I've got my finger over a clip to kind of open it a little bit and it's holding my layers as I sew until I get to the next clip and then I'll kind of move it away. And you want to make sure that your layers are staying lined up. All right, I'm getting close to the dart, so I'm gonna sew over top of that. And then as I'm getting to this curve, I'm grabbing a little screwdriver and pressing everything back into place. I'm using it as like my little finger, my extra little finger, so that I don't hurt myself. And I can keep all of those layers together. And what I like about using a screwdriver instead of a stiletto is that a stiletto is so pointy and one little piece, I, guess, I think it works in some instances, but like I don't want to risk stabbing through my vinyl and with a screwdriver it's dull enough that it shouldn't stab through your materials. Alright, as I'm coming down the other side, it's kind of wrapped around the edge of my sewing machine so I'm gonna free it from that and that will help prevent any shifting of the layers and I will carry on so it feels fine it feels structured enough especially since we're also going to be sewing the sides together again like that's going to add a lot of structure to the bag so i am trimming down the seam allowance as instructed by the pattern and then we are going to repeat that to the other side Oh, these colors together like they're not perfect matches but they're all within the fabric so it kind of works so I've got three clips along the bottom edge if you need to again baste it in place or a little stay stitch or staples and then work on clipping the top into place and then work out the curve. And we are sewing in the round so I have my clips in place accordingly. Okay, so I'm at the curve so I can kind of pinch all the layers together. Make sure my gusset all fits nicely. And there is no such thing as like over clipping. If you want to add a clip for every little open space, do so. I like to do a decent amount of clips, but not over clipping. And then as I sew, I will re-clip the pieces together. going over my dart and I'm starting to get to the curve so anytime I start and stop I want to make sure that I leave my needle down in the fabric and use that screwdriver or stiletto or even if you have like a cuticle pusher in a little manicure set at home you could use that 
Um, but I feel like most sewing machines have a little screwdriver that they come with. And then back stitch when you get to the top. What are you even doing, man? Getting plastic from the trash. Get down. Get down. All right, and then we're going to trim that away. I am so excited about how this is looking. Um, so just to get a feel for what that is going to look like, you could fold it down on that stabilizer. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, look at how the slip pocket is like right there. That's so cool. It's a little bit small of a slip pocket, but like it fits a large phone like just so all right we are going to move on to the inside zippered pocket as well as all of our lining pieces so i'm going to go ahead and kind of organize my messy bin here so i've got my side panels clip those together my bottom panel um, I'm only adding a zippered pocket to one side of my lining, so I'm going to go ahead and add my bottom to the other side of the lining really quick, just to get those pieces out of the way. So this is a half inch seam allowance. Um, some industrials may not be able to sew on the water resistant canvas without bunching. You can help with that by pulling on the fabric a little bit just to create a little more tension. And then I know we're adding a zipper panel for the closure of this bag so I'm going to snip my center just super quick. Okay, so I can set all of these pieces aside together. And now I just have my lining, my zipper pocket pieces, as well as my zipper pocket overlay. Um, this is not part of the pattern, it's optional, but you can add a zipper pocket however you prefer. So this is just my preferred method currently. So I'm going to use double-sided tape on the outermost top and bottom edges of the overlay piece. Um, and in my cutting video, I go over how to cut this. This is, like I said, not included in the pattern. And this is going to get placed half an inch down from the top edge. and centered, which is about one inch from either side. Hmm. I'm just thinking like if my seam allowance is half an inch, that's going to be right there. So because of the overlay, I'm going to do three quarters. We'll see if this pays off. And then I can slip a little woven label under there. Okay. 
And then we're going to sew around the outermost edge of this overlay. Cutting open, it does not seem ripple, the box around. And you want to be extra careful not to snip too close to the threads and you also don't want to cut through your overlay. Which is one of the reasons I like to drag my scissors across it because then I know I'm not cutting the overlay. So there is what that looks like. And then we're going to grab our zipper and our lining pieces. I like to cut my zipper about two inches longer than my lining pieces because then I don't have to worry about my zipper pull being in the way or not. Yikes. Um, I can just like slide it out of the way and then I know for sure that my zipper is not going to fray into the overlay or in the lining. So I will show you what that looks like. I have the right side of my fabric facing up and I'm gonna lay my zipper wrong side down, lining up one edge and letting my zipper pull trail off on the other side. Another way you could do this is you could just fold down your fabric and then sew it in place. And then you don't have to do two lines of stitching, but I like the security of the two lines of stitching. And I'm just gonna sew at about an eighth of an inch on that top edge. Like that. And then you're gonna fold this down and top stitch through that. So this creates no raw edge of your zipper within that seam and just a beautiful finish within your zipper pocket. And it's kind of, the. I'm sure you guys have seen the videos and heard me say it before, but um, this was really hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, the first time I used this, was either in a sonar pattern or um, also petite pattern. And I was like, what? Huh? What? And then I, I finally understood it. But so again, we want right sides. Wait. Oh, no, I've done that wrong. Have I done that wrong? I've done that wrong. No. Okay, right sides together. Wow, I don't even know at this point if I'm doing it wrong. I don't think so. I think this should be wrong side out though, actually. Like, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah.
I'll get there, hold on. I've just done it wrong, but it's still going to work. No, it's not. Because you want the finished edged inside the zipper. So it goes like this. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. I did it wrong, not a big deal. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna edit that out. You put your tape on the inside edge of your zipper. Yeah, because you're, you're opening the zipper and you're looking inside the bag and that's where you see no raw edges. So you want right side facing down, lining side facing up, because when you flip this, there's the inside of your lining looking all nice. I got it, I did it. It's been a really long time since I have sewn, in case you didn't know. Okay, and then we'll flip it open because we're looking at the inside of our zipper pocket. Oh, I... So right now, you should see the back side of your zipper or the wrong side and the right side of your lining. And here you should see wrong side of your lining right side of your zipper, not this. But here's what I'm gonna do. Because you're not gonna see the very top of the zipper, I'm not gonna worry about redoing it. Like, right here, if you unzip this, the only place you're gonna be able to see, oh, is that wrong? Oh, I have to, wait. I have to do it the other way. Do it doesn't. That looks bad. That looks fine. So I'll reattach my zipper pull. <laughs> I'm doing great. You're doing great. I hope you're doing great, honestly. Oh, but that totally messes up my need for the zipper pull to be way off. Out. All right, this one is right. I still have to reattach my zipper pull. So let's do that. Whatever. All right. All good. <laughs> so at this point, both sides of your zipper should look like this. You should see the raw edge of your zipper tape facing up, okay? And the overhang of your zipper tape should be on this side. Do as I say, not as I do. And then we're gonna add some double-sided tape to those top edges and lay our zipper in place. And I usually like to start with one side of the zipper, peeling the tape off. And lay that down and centered. And you wanna make sure that your zipper pocket sides match up with your overlay. and then center your zipper tape within the overlay. And now once I've got one side into place, I can peel the tape of the other side and lay that nice and flat. Into place. Okay, okay. And now you'll see this is your inside zipper pocket. This is what you want it to look like. This is what you don't want it to look like. But it's okay because when you fold it all down, when I unzip this, I'm not gonna see up there. You're just not. But we gotta sew this down and into place and we're gonna sew around the inside opening of the overlay 
making sure to keep our layers flayed open. You, you want to see both sides of your zipper pocket lining out of the way. And zip your zipper pull out of the way. If you can keep your, te your teeth, the zipper teeth together as you're sewing, you're going to prevent any puckering and um, weird bunching of your zipper when you zip it closed. All right, I'm getting close to my zipper pull again. And at this point, I would bring my zipper pull in and unzip and just go really slow. And before you sew this shut, just re-zip it. Hold your zipper tape and unzip it again a little bit and then finish that off. And then you'll fold that down. And you'll see that there is some excess of the lining on one side that is normal and okay. We're just gonna trim that away so that they're the same size. And we are turning the bag through the zipper pocket so we need to leave that open. But that is what that pocket looks like. And I can trim a little bit of this away too. And if you want to be overly cautious, it can't hurt to just singe the ends of your zipper tape so it doesn't come undone. And then you can peel this out of the way. And sew that pocket shut. And then I like to fold up both layers of the zipper pocket and sew that side. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Folding that up. trim the excess bulk from right there and fold that open and that creates a nice folded edge for us to turn the pocket through. So now I can fold this in half and mark my center and then we're going to work on adding our zipper panel. So I'll add that to my done pile, grab my zipper panel, and grab my zipper that we started with. And we're going to fold the short raw edges of our zipper panels in by half an inch. And the easiest way to do this consistently is to measure one inch in and fold up to that line. So I'm adding some double sided tape. You can either add it at the very edge or right at the one inch line within that folded seam. Okay, 
Now I've got all of those taped and then I'm going to add some more tape. If you could believe it. To one side where the zipper is going to get attached on the right side I'm going to add one piece of double sided tape to each. And I'm using eighth inch wide so that it won't show it'll be within the seam. If you use quarter inch again you could still be risking seeing it within the seam allowance so that's one reason I love having eighth inch wide over quarter inch wide. I just I shouldn't say over instead of in place of. All right I'm gonna start with one side of my exterior Unzip my zipper a little bit, lay that in place, and I have my folded over 90 degree edge, 90 degree angle, not edge, about an eighth of an inch from the top folded edge there. And then you can sew that in place, but since I've got double sided tape for all of my layers, I'm just going to lay the next one over top of it and then sew it together. And at this point, if your lining and your exteriors don't quite match up, you can refold the pieces. And you do not want to sew past about an eighth of an inch in from the edge. That way you don't see those stitches when you turn this to then top stitch. So I'm creating a crease and folding this open and laying it on itself. Holding that seam and I'm going to top stitch in a square all the way around this piece and then repeat it on the other side. Alright, I'm going to zip it together so that there's no wonkiness in my zipper and line up one edge of my zipper panel with the other edge of my zipper panel and then I'll flip it over and line up the raw edge of my zipper tape and then I'll unzip it. And the reason I unzip it is so that just like with our zipper pocket our zipper pull is just completely out of the way and you don't have to worry about zipping it or unzipping it. Um, some people will add their zipper pull at the very end and that is definitely a good technique but I know that I'm not the greatest at lining the zipper pull back up perfectly and I just don't want to risk any bunching. So I've moved my needle in from the edge about an eighth of an inch using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm sewing down that zipper. Make sure you don't sew through the teeth or sew too close to the teeth. And then back stitching at the beginning and the end. Pressing that seam open. And top stitching around all four sides. And then in the pattern she mentions adding a, a fabric zipper tab and I prefer to use metal zipper 
tab ends, so I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm just going to add that at the very end. So I'm going to mark the centers of the zipper panel. Make sure that you're folding it all together to find the center instead of like finding the center of this one and this one and what if they're off. Um, find the complete center. It's such a cute little zipper panel. Starting with the side with a zipper pocket, I've got my zippers facing the same direction and I'm going to baste the zipper pocket, nope, zipper panel to the center of the lining panel. Okay. And then I'm going to add the lining to the other side, the lining bottom to the other side of the lining. Oh, that was about to be very wrong. Lining bottom to the other side of the lining. If you are using really stiff materials and you're worried about turning the bag through the zipper pocket, you could always leave a section open in the main bottom of the bag. But I think we'll be okay. The zipper pocket size is very generous for all of the bag sizes. So I'm going to top stitch this. Make sure your zipper pocket is out of the way. You're only sewing through the seam. And now we can add our zipper to the top of the other side of our lining. Okay. And now we're ready to add those side panels. After I find, oh, they're over here. <laughs> I just have to find mine. Where'd they go? All right, one at a time. I'm gonna snip to find my center marks. I'm gonna unzip this and then find the center mark of my side panel. Line up those centers and then line up the top edge. And just like on the exterior, we will work our way through the curve once we have those focal points clipped and ready to go. Okay, got those clipped in place. Make sure that your zipper pocket lining pieces are out of the way. And then normally you would want to increase your seam allowance as you work your way down into the lining. I don't know that this is the case for this bag, so I'm gonna keep it pretty consistent to the exterior. And then since I did not add any interfacing to the lining of my bag, um, it's really easy, flexible to sew.
And that is what it is looking like. Super cute. Find the centers. Snip. I love this color of water resistant canvas, but it is so hard to know which is the right side and which is the wrong side. Like, you just have to know the texture. Ugh, that's a lot. All right. And then make sure that you're putting right sides together. I can see that my darts are part of the wrong side, so that's an easy marker for me. It also couldn't hurt to unzip your zipper pocket a little bit um, so that depending on what size zipper pull you've used, it's completely out of the risk of being sewn into your side seam or kind of sneaking its way through and breaking the needle if you accidentally sew through it or anything. And now we can trim that. I don't. I'm not going to trim that, um, just because water-resistant canvas, like, it's not thick. I don't think it'll do much damage. But if you use like the Decaville light for your lining, definitely, definitely, definitely trim that down. But ooh. so we're gonna turn this right sides out. And this is going to go inside the exterior of the bag. And whichever way is front, doesn't matter. Um, you want your zipper pocket to be to the back side of the bag. Well, I want mine. You can do whatever you want. I am so used to like making sure it fits when I do that, but this one won't. Weird. It's not weird. It's part of the pattern, but I'm just like, oh yeah. So I'm lining up the side seams. To prevent bulk, you can nest your seams instead of um, butterflying them, but you want to make sure that you push them in the same direction for both sides. It's really going to be up to you if you want to sew it with the lining facing up or the exterior facing up. Um, but I know that I want to sew right on top, not through, but right on top of that stabilizer, which is a half an inch from the top edge. So I'm going to try to sew it like this, but I'm going to mark out a line on my side panel for my seam allowance just in case. Um, I feel like this could also be done as a drop-in liner if you wanted to mark 
If you wanted to make a one inch mark around your exterior and your lining, and then fold your raw edge down to that line. But, I mean, it's, it's really just another method, however you want to do it. Uh, I'm going to change my bobbin. It sounded... Ooh, we might have made it, but it was pretty low. Nah, we wouldn't have made it. That's okay. So that makes this a two bobbin bag. I made three just in case, but two should be good. Um, if you are using thinner thread, you could probably get away with just one, but it never hurts to make multiple bobbins for your project. All right. I'm going to get started. Again, I'm just sewing right on top, not through, right above, not on top, right above that Decaville Heavy Stabilizer. And then make sure that you can see your lining and your exterior are lined up. Make sure you're not sewing through your D-rings and you got plenty of room. If you have to readjust, leave your needle in the fabric. And then when you readjust, just kind of resituate your layers and then continue sewing. And I had those clips on my D-ring connector, so I need to make sure I remove those. As far as sewing with the amount of stabilizer I have not attached to the bag, I'm really happy with it. Um, nothing has felt difficult or like I'm fighting the bag. It's not like a super arm workout, so that's nice. All right. Hmm. I was looking, looking for an opening in the bottom. All right. Reach in and start by grabbing the bottom of your bag first. And turning that through. Because if you, if you try to pull your lining through first, you're gonna get caught because that is what's closest to what you're turning through, not what's farthest away. So start with what is farthest away. And just double check that you've caught everything. Everything's lined up nicely. And I'm gonna sew my zipper pocket shut now. Once I have verified that everything looks good, because with the top stitching of this bag, not that it would be difficult to sew it back up. Um, I just know that I might forget and be too excited. I also might make the crossbody strap too. Just again, so it's done. I'm 
can see when you look into the zipper pocket, it's got a nice edge, not on the top, but on the bottom of mine. Here should be perfect. my bag first. All right, now comes the fun part. Of folding our bag into place. So because we've got that Decaville heavy, I know where the top of my bag is. So I can just kind of roll that seam up to the top. And clip it. And then there is no stabilizer on the side seam, but once I have the front and back done, I can kind of guess for the side panel. It kind of wants to relax into shape. And then I'll press my lining once again. Reclip because I broke it. It looks a little big right now. It's okay. Looks a little funky. Trust the process because this is going to get top stitched together. Let me read. With the measurement of the tester pieces, if I were to sew where the pattern is instructing me to right here, I'm gonna be sewing my pocket shut. So yours will likely look very different. However, if you don't want to sew along that seam, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be riveting through my strap connectors through the lining here and here. So that's gonna keep my lining in place where it needs to be for this bag so that I don't have to try to um, differ how I'm top stitching there. Um, so right now I'm just going to fold my zipper down and top stitch an eighth of an inch from the top edge. But you will want to also top stitch this way. You might flip your bag out the other way just in case. And then make sure that your D-ring is folded out of the way. And then as I'm top stitching, I'm folding my zipper panel out of the way as well as my handles. I'm not having an issue with any of the interfacing or layers as I have chosen to do them. I've moved my D-ring out of the way. And then on this side again, make sure that your zipper panel is out of the way.
you can see your zipper panel already wants to point up and that's perfectly fine that's what you want so I didn't I'm okay with how I'm making this one to not press and top stitch around that but it does add to the look of the bag if you're able to do that um, but yeah like I said I'm gonna add a rivet right there which will keep my lining in place all right I just wanted to test the zipper panel and see how that looked but I'm gonna open this up you really want to make sure that your lining is taut within the bag everything's lined up nicely because we are going to fold this seam on itself So I've got my hand inside the bag to make sure that I'm catching both the lining and the exterior. See, so yeah, I almost feel like you don't even need to top stitch that second time. Because you're catching your lining right now. So if you're watching this and the pattern you have doesn't say to top stitch it twice, maybe maybe she changed it. <laughs> So right now for me it's a little thick where I have that oh what is that oh I think it's just like the connection seam maybe yeah where my exterior and my lining or my side panel and my exterior meet it's a little, a little bulky yeah, hand inside at the seam that you're pinching together the top stitch to make sure that you grabbed your lining and your exterior. Yeah, very, very happy with my interfacing choices in at this point. My lining is not too bulky. If I had used waterproof canvas, it definitely would be. It would be very sad. And I've got my hand pressing into the lining to make sure I'm catching it. Within this seam. And I think had I trimmed down those darts, I don't think I would have as much bulk as I do right now. And then just look inside and make sure that you've caught the layers. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So before I top stitch, I'm going to go ahead and press all these sides together and clip them. And the darts and the bottom of the bag are offset so that you don't have a ton of bulk in that area. Oh my 
goodness, all of these together are just so stinking pretty. Okay. So that is the shape of the bag. Oh my gosh. I love it. Now it is time to top stitch those sides, but I just wanted to give you a glance at what that zipper panel looks like. It fits so perfectly and it's like the same width as the handles. So satisfying. Um, I did let Jenny know that I think the handle should be an inch taller, but it could be that the vinyl I used isn't giving this as much height. I don't know. I think they just need to be a little bit, a little bit taller. They're good grab handle size, but like not the greatest. Um, I absolutely am loving where the strap connectors are. I think that's a really nice, I don't know, it just looks so satisfying from the top. Um, and I am putting off top stitching this. Uh, let's do it. Half an inch. And that is so that you're not sewing through the bulk of your side seam making it a little bit easier on a domestic um i am using my thin foot i'm just gonna go super slow taking care to line up those layers I'm very happy with my material choices. I know I keep saying that, but I think anything more, and I would have been frustrated with how thick things were. Um, definitely trim down your darts with the materials you pick. I did not do that, and I should have. Um, sewing the sides, they're a really nice shape like they're wide enough that this isn't too too tricky but again I'm on an industrial I don't know how I would feel if I were sewing a domestic okay needle in if you need to readjust and then continue on Definitely want to secure your back stitching for this one. So that is what that looks like. You can press that back out just a little bit. Make sure you're holding your, your starting threads too so that there's no weird nesting. And then maybe take a break, have some lunch, um, a snack, and then top stitch the other side.
Oh no, oh no, oh no. I accidentally hit the up on my machine, so some of those might be loopy. Oh no. I love how Ben is like super offended that I'm. Oh no, it skipped because that was up. I think I can fix it. So that little section that skipped, I'm just going to sew back over it. Okay, like it never happened. Good thing I didn't use like a really contrasting thread. Um, I'm not going to trim that jump stitched area and that was not because of the thickness that was because I accidentally had the lift up on my machine. I'm going to rivet through right there really quick and then we'll move on to the strap. Let's go ahead and finish up the strap. I am starting, I've cut off a four inch section to add my square ring to, and then I'm adding my slide adjuster to one open end of my webbing. And I'm going to secure that with two rows of stitching or even a box stitch if I can manage. Okay, yeah, you can see. I was like, please tell me you can see that this cat isn't. Okay. And then we have these fun connectors here. Um, she added to the pattern after I cut to add a little piece of stabilizer right there, but I'm going to use a little bit of this silent hero tape. It's literally just a piece of um, zipper twill and that'll help with that piece. And we're going to line this up in the center like nearly to the top edge of our webbing. Snap hook and then fold it over. And this is a one inch snap hook. Mm, that looks really nice. I just sewed across that as a square, but you could also kind of go down further into the trapezoidal shape at the bottom, but I think that looks fantastic. And then you could edge coat this too if you wanted. So now that I've got my slider on, this end of my snap hook attached, this whole piece now becomes the other side snap hook. So I'm going to slide this through that square ring up and around my slide adjuster. And then the other end of my strap connector
goes on this side. And then you could use um, glue to set this in place and then let it dry and then sew around it as well. Ben, just move. <laughs> I'm going to start straight across the top so those layers don't shift. And then I'm just sewing from where that diagonal corner starts across to the other side and then back up. And that is our crossbody strap. Pull our threads through and trim. And depending on the cork or vinyl you used, you can even take your lighter to seal the ends and then edge coat, etc. But I think the ends of that strap look really fun. Trans sponsor tote bag from Sincerely Gen Patterns. So that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed making the Schmedium Trans sponsor with me. I forgot to film an outro, so here's the bag. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!